Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Tanil and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order and by god does this movie really stretch the term of a theatrically released film and is helping solidify future rules <laughs> for years going forward because to god damn clip shows <laughs> We watched the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner movie. This is one as soon as I saw it on the list. I was like, really? Are we going to watch this? And Sean's like, it's theatrically released. And I'm like, ah. Which is technically true, but it's... Uh, going forward, we're not mo watching movies like this. No, but I am glad we're going to talk about this today. Because I think this movie brings up a very good topic for us to talk about. Yes. Before we get into that, let's go into what this is. Okay, so the movie is literally just, it's a collection of like 10 or 15 or so Bugs Bunny and other Looney Tunes shorts, and then like the end is a compilation of Roadrunner stuff. Okay, so what we have here, cartoons with Bugs Bunny and others, we have a brief clip from Rabbit Seasoning. Full shorts of Hairway to the Stars, Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century, Duckamuck, Bully for Bugs, Alibaba Bunny, Rabbit Fire, What's Opera Doc, and then shortened versions of Robin Hood Daffy for sentimental reasons, Long Haired Hair, Operation Rabbit. And... Then, we literally have the cobbled remains of some Roadrunner and Wiley e. Coyote shorts, which literally have been cobbled together so poorly. There's like 20 shorts mm -hmm. that they cobbled together into what I think was presented as like three shorts. No, no, it was literally just, and now we're doing Roadrunner stuff. And then it just never stopped. And it ruins the jokes. All of them. So bad. It's just because a lot of time, I mean, Timing I don't is know. Important. I don't know why I need to explain this to, you know, Chuck Jones, who directed this, like directed these shorts. But the, the Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote shorts are all based on timing and setting up expectation, defying the expectation and the payoff of that and the payoff not meeting your expectation. Mm -hmm. And because things are paced out so weird, it just ruins all of these jokes. It's like one or two kind of work, but when you take, it's like there's one where it's just a, he's got like a catapult. Mm-hmm. And he you try to use, tries to use the catapult like five times. When they're all back to back to back, you know what's going on, and you're just waiting to see what new way it's going to fail. But because how it's, it's presented paced here, out so much here, it's just it's like, oh, just why are we going back to the catapult again? Yeah, it's just sporadically placed among other things, and there's no good payoff for it being delayed like that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... It's bad. So the framing device for this is Bugs Bunny sitting in his luxurious 70s hip trendy mansion and talking about it's how very, he's such uh, a great star. It's a very, like, is it uh, Flank, Frank Lloyd Wright house? You know, the famous architect? Dude, I don't know. It, it's, it's very... It's very it's, modern. Yeah, it's... The modern architect house, I think. From the 40s. Yeah. Or the 70s. I like, think that's who I'm thinking of. And he walks poorly and is animated bad. And there's like three backgrounds. <laughs> I thought you were like making a comment on like how Bugs walks is poor. No, the animation's no, not great for the these The animation segments. for these new segments to put this compilation together is bad. And the setup is like... Hey, what if I told you the whole joke before we start the short? Mm hmm And then we watch the short where he just ruined the entire joke. Well, or it, like, he makes some comment after the short is done that, like, 
It, it's bad. All of these it's in between so segments bad. are bad. It's so bad. It There's would be so better if it was literally just uh, short to short to short with no in betweens. There's so many times too where Bugs leads into a short by giving completely inaccurate information about the short. Mm -hmm. Where he's like, this time I was in France. And then like, th he, this never specifically happens, but it's stuff like this where he's like, oh man, that's the last time I ever go to France. And then like, the short will be obviously in Spain, but like, it's not self-aware. Like it's it just doesn't like, realize it's doing it. It's, it's just, just wrong, getting wrong information. information. Which is again, weird because like, this is directed by the same guy who directed all of these shorts. So you think he'd realize what the hell is going on here. So the movie is called The Bugs Bunny Roadrunner Movie. I just want to talk about that aspect real quick because we get, I would say, a third of the shorts that we see don't have Bugs Bunny in it. Instead are almost all Daffy Duck. Mm -hmm. Or there's the one with the bad touch skunk. <laughs> The sexual assault skunk. Yeah. Happy Le Pew. Screw that guy. Never bring him back. It's just not okay. It's just not. Yeah, it's just not. It's not know. okay for today's standards. No. And I mean, like, yeah, yeah. It's no. a man sexually. Uh, but, I mean, we know. We know. Boy. Everyone knows, Sean. It's bad. You don't have to say it. Everyone knows. Ugh. And then the final 10 minutes are this horrible compilation of Roadrunner. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's from, bad. like, different eras of Roadrunner oh, shorts, Oh, the animation too, is all different. Where, yeah, it's like the animation styles are really different. They they range from being, like, really Chuck Jonesy to, you know, not as much sticking more to the original Looney Tunes style. Or um, in some of them, Wiley will talk and you are like, wait, oh my god, I forgot. For some reason, they decided to make Wiley talk at... It was a bad idea. Very bad idea. Uh, Overall, not worth it. And th the best segments from this entire movie were the ones that Bugs Bunny wasn't in or the Roadrunner. It was honestly like my personal enjoyment from this movie came from the shorts where it was just Daffy Duck. Yeah. Like those were the ones I had the most fun with because he's an asshole and he gets... Smacked around for it. <laughs> I mean, I don't really think we need to go into the shorts themselves because no. we've covered most of these shorts already. Yeah. So if you're interested in hearing our thoughts on these shorts, we're not as negative as this when we talk about them all the time. We're still not the biggest fans of Looney Tunes in general, but we talk about most of these shorts in our 40s wrap up. I believe 40s and 50s. Um, when we talk about shorts. So Probably, definitely go check yeah. those out in the playlist. I mostly just want to talk about why this movie was made. Because I feel like that is more important than the context of the movie itself. Yeah, let's go for it. Because, like, there's no reason to talk about the movie itself anymore. Mm -hmm. So, like we were saying before, the framing device is Bugs in his mansion talking about the shorts before the shorts play. And there's the scene right off at the beginning where Bugs takes you down this hall of caricatures and he's like, these are my papas, my fathers. My dads. My dads. Uh, All 12 of them. <laughs> and so it's like a tongue-in-cheek joke referring to the animators who worked on Bugs Bunny shorts as his dad. Notably left off this wall is Bob Clampett, and I don't think Tex Avery was on this wall either, but uh, Bob I Clampett for sure was not. Uh, and this movie, as it turns out, is a direct response to a movie that Tex Avery and Bob Clampett made a few years ago, where it was also a Bugs Bunny clip show. And for some reason, we didn't see this one, but um, thank God. <laughs> where... They essentially have a very similar scene where they essentially just give themselves all the credit for creating Bugs Bunny, and, and they show a bunch of Chuck their Jones. and they show off a bunch of their shorts. Okay, so this was Chuck Jones doing the same thing, but with his shorts instead. Mm -hmm. But Chuck Jones is trying to be the good guy here because he's crediting everybody else. 
that Everybody Tex else. and that that Tex Avery and Bob claimed but didn't. And so, like, there's this whole feud at Warner Brothers for like who created Bugs Bunny, and Chuck Jones is trying to be on the side of like we all had input, all of us did, but mostly me. <laughs> no, he doesn't say that, but. Like that's the intent. There, there is. See, my argument here is that Bugs Bunny is created by who is ever whoever is animating him at the time, because whoever is animating him at the time has a different take on Bugs Bunny. Mm-hmm. And in reality, none of you guys own Bugs Bunny. Warner Brothers owns Bugs Bunny. And if Warner Brothers says that Bugs Bunny isn't allowed to do this, or Bugs Bunny can't do that... You guys have to follow those rules. You guys have to follow those rules. I mean, it's the same... It's the same issue with, like, you know, the Mickey Mouse whole thing, where Walt wanted complete control over Mickey, so he made his own, like... Studio. Studio, so he wouldn't have... Where he had complete control. Right, so he wouldn't have, like, the whole Oswald thing happen to him again. And what gets me is at the end of this movie, they have the audacity to roll credits where they say, you know, look at all these. And like they specifically like underline, like we're doing something really great here. These wonderful, hardworking people who produced and made this movie. Without them, this would not be possible. And it says all of them. All all of them. And then it writes everybody's names. And then dot, dot, dot. And many others. It doesn't even list everyone that ever worked on these shorts. No. Presumably because they've lost the lists at these points. Because back in the day, you don't, they didn't. Credit everybody that worked on movies. And fun fact, not even all the voice actors were credited in this. Not even all the voice actors? Well, no, because you have to say at the end of a Looney Tunes short that Mel Blanc voiced everything. So if you have more than Mel Blanc on the credits, it's it, it's not a Looney Tunes thing. Wow. But no, there's like two other people who gave... Uh, voices in this film, but they're not credited either. And so, like, this just, oh, it makes me so mad because, like, this movie... We're gonna credit everybody and not credit anybody. (laughs) This movie could have been a statement about the atrocious standards for giving credit. In animated films. In animated films. And shorts and TV and etc. In the film industry in general at this point. Mm Mm-hmm. It's horrible. There is a reason now that credits take so long and you show everybody's name because turns out people like getting credit for the things they do. Yeah, if you make a thing and you spent, I don't know, a year working on it, but nobody knows you worked on it because they didn't put your name on it, it's kind of upsetting. Well, and, you know, in this time in particular, and I think we even still kind of you get that mindset nowadays, too, where people like to attribute all of the credit onto one person. Yeah. And that was a... It still is. It's it's a huge problem where, like, directors get all the credit. And obviously, Chuck Jones wanted to make a statement about, you know, like, hey, I'm a director for Bugs Bunny. I deserve some of this credit. And it's like, cool, but you're missing the point, Chuck. Like... Everybody deserves credit. You could have made a statement here about how it's really shitty not to get credit and actually, like, have the credits for everybody here, but you don't do that. Instead, you're just having a piss baby contest with two of your co-workers, who, I admit, I don't like very much either, but, like, please, dude. Ugh. Everybody, like, I have so much respect for these old animators because they created a lot of the framework for what animation is nowadays. But man, when you go back and you do your history on like the Warner Brothers teams and the Disney teams, there's just so many goddamn egomaniac white men <laughs> who just fight about who's the most important. Yeah. And I mean like there's a there's a pretty infamous um 
interview with Chuck Jones where he says that Walt Disney came up to him and he's like, hey, Chuck, I'd like to have you at, at Walt Disney Productions. And Chuck Jones denies the job saying, if I was going to be at Disney, I'd want your job talking to Walt. <laughs> and it's like, ha ha, funny. But also like... That's how egotistical they all are. Yeah. And on one hand, I get it because animation is such a thankless job. That like you, and for being such a Hollywood job, it is so thankless. You go so under, like under the notice of the general public, So if which you is get a nice anywhere. thing about the job. Mm -hmm. But you, especially back in this, you know, early culture of the industry, like you had to scrape and, scrape claw, and for claw any recognition. So these guys that do get some of it aren't letting it go. Yeah. Whatsoever. Exactly. So, so you know, and I, and I found the... That thank you for the industry being more inclusive now? Now like, actually recognizing who all works on these films? Yeah, uh, but I mean, like, we still have that still problem good. nowadays oh, where, absolutely. you know, we watch a movie... And one person's name is attributed on there and you're just like, oh, that person worked on this. Well, yeah, it's like, you know... Soul knows, just came out. Nothing. Soul just came out, and it's all like, oh, it's another Pete Doctor movie. And it's so like we give all the credit to Pete Doctor, but like obviously so many other people worked on Soul other than Pete Doctor. And so many things are different from Soul from his other movies, like Inside Out or Monsters Inc. Like that was a those are completely groups, different groups of teams working on that movie to make the movie what it is but mm -hmm. we still just call it like a pete doctor movie you say that but i had no idea who pete doctor was until you until mentioned I listed right now <laughs> damn it sean no no You're like supposed to be a professional it's pete doctor movie and i'm like cool <laughs> what else has he done here this one should ring more bells for you brad bird brad bird yeah i know he's like uh i okay i know a lot of the negatives and i know he did the incredibles and incredibles <laughs> too Past that, I don't know any of the other movies that he's done. Ratatouille. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Tomorrowland. The live we, action which one. Which we didn't watch, no. but it has the same message. <laughs> but we won't go into this. We'll go into this later when we talk about those movies. Uh -huh. But he also directed, like, The Iron Giant. Okay, yes. Yeah. Which... Another, uh, whatever, another whatever, case what, of somebody yeah. getting all the credit for, for the movies they do. We're getting like very... Tim Burton, you know, will get all the credit for... It's like yes. just directors mm -hmm. tend to get all the credit for the, the movie that yes. they're doing when, like, it's... a movie is so complicated and it takes so many people to make it. Mm -hmm. And a director cannot fill all those positions. I just... <sighs> and this is obviously something that you feel a lot personally... Because you are one of the head creators of an animation project now. Mm -hmm. And everyone keeps attributing it to you alone. Yeah, and I just have to keep screaming, please stop doing that. It, D Star Clan Studios is a joint effort between four main people who hire out other people as well. Mm -hmm. It's you, uh, Audrey... Avalon and Teef, mm -hmm. you all four work together. You all four are just as important as the others. Yeah, hell, this would not be Even anything. Possible. Yeah, if it was just me. Yeah. Like, but that's what just pisses me off about this, is that I feel like, if nothing else, this was a giant waste of time. But yes. it, it could have not been a giant waste of time if... It had actually stuck to what it was pissed off about and actually gave credit to everybody. And it could have, like, it, it could have set that standard. Mm -hmm. It could have been Warner Brothers and Chuck Jones saying, no, enough is enough. People deserve credit. And Warner Brothers is, and the Looney Tunes brand in general has always prided itself in being like, hey, F you, Disney, we're going to you're we're gonna you do suck things we're gonna do things differently and like if they really really wanted to be that company credit giving everybody. giving credit to everybody would have been the biggest like 
stick it up to Disney that they could have done because, you know, maybe not at this point necessarily. Well, yeah, even at this point, because Disney still is in shambles after Walt's death. So there's like... It's still an absolute mess over there. there. There's still like, especially in this point in time, everybody attributing anything good that came from the Walt Disney Company to Walt. Mm -hmm. When that's not even remotely true. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. This review went on significantly longer than I expected it to. Mm Mm-hmm. There's also a thing that Bug says here at the end where he says, eat your heart out, Burt Reynolds. And, like, I was trying to figure out if there was some meaning behind that. Like, if Burt Reynolds had said something disparaging to animation at some point or something. But no, it's just a, hey, let's make one pop culture reference before we leave. That's it. Okay. Yep. Cool last minute pop culture reference there. Thank you. Let's move on to the next movie of the year. We're going to France, and we're watching a movie that I'm definitely going to uh, butcher, but it's Uba et la Grande Guidouille. <laughs> it's on screen, because I don't know how to say French words. Oh, no. Oh, no. I apologize profusely, but I can't speak French. Pardon my French. <laughs> See you guys then. Inside me, 